Can you tell us about yourself? Yes, my name is Daniel DeWald. I'm from uh, Charleston, South Carolina, and I was a former platoon leader for the 4th Infantry Division, 3rd Battalion, 12th Infantry. My book is about the events from 1967 to 1970 when I was a combat platoon leader for that group. Thank you. And how did you get into writing? What or who inspired you to write? For this book, my mother inspired me to write because I had a number of memoirs about the war and she wanted me to put it in a better sequence of events and that's what caused me to write the book and I had, I had written uh, numerous white papers for companies so I had the writing uh, knowledge in, in my uh, experience but never in a book form so this is a real life book there's nothing uh, it's every, all true events and uh, it provides me a basis for writing other books and the, on my second book, A Journey for Darkness to Light is a Search for Prisoners of War, as an outgrowth of this book. What is Gray Feathers all about? It's a book about the a platoon leader's role in the war from the events of 1967 to 1970. It has all the battle schematics of the war, so you understand decision making under fire the bravery of the people that were involved in the war, the, uh, the, the challenges that it caused you to make decisions on, and how you cope with what actually happened on it, uh, how quickly things happened. So really it's, uh, it gives uh, cultural aspects of the war, it talks about the religion of the war, it talks about a platoon leader's perspective of what actually happened when you first arrived. It uh, gives you an approach that nobody really took before. It's a, it's a platoon leader's perspective of the war. Well, that's something interesting. Um, what should people, why should people read it and do you think it would make a difference in their lives and in what way? People should read the book because it gives a different perspective, a more historical perspective of the war, but it also is included in action and adventure type of genre in the war. It gives things that people never realized happened and never got published. So all the events you see have never, has most likely not been published in the past. So uh, that was one of the reasons to get people to understand what really went on. Uh, and I think what you get out of it is understanding what, how to make decisions under fire. How to, what's really Gray Feathers doing in relation to the, what Indian logic is? Because the Indians got braves, got Gray Feathers when they first entered the tribe. So when they got a colored feather, it was for an event they achieved. So you, everyone starts out the same. We'll scratch each other's back. That's what the war is about. We, stuck, we stood by ourselves. We divided the camaraderie that we had. And everybody worked together to make it, the objective happen. Well, that's exciting stuff. I'm looking forward to reading your book. Good. Um, what is the most challenging part of your writing journey, and how did you go about it? I think the most challenging was the uh, third first person uh, relationship for me because um, when you really look at it, uh, from a business perspective, you write everything in the third person. So when I changed from business writing to regular writing to get the first person, I didn't quite understand all that relationship. So that was a hard thing for me. And even all the edits, I mean, I had 30 revisions in this thing. And I could have stood probably another 10 more revisions before it was perfect. So I have some errors in that book. But the main thing is a chilling example of war. It tells you how people feel, and how they reacted, and what kind of bravery that they undertook. That's the important thing of the, of the book. And I, that's what I want them to take away from the book. 
And what advice would you give to your readers? When you write a book, uh, be organized. Uh, write in the, as you would enjoy the book yourself. Because if they don't want to read it, you don't want to read it either. So enjoy writing the book and being being a spokesperson for that book. Well, that makes a lot of sense, right? You got to love your own before you can start. That's right. Um, sharing it with other people. That's right. Please invite the viewers to grab a copy of Gray Feathers and where can they purchase it and how much does it cost? You can purchase it on Amazon.com. The book is there at Barnes & Noble. You can purchase it uh, from Reader's Magnet right now on their website. Uh, and uh, uh, let's see, there are bookstores that are carrying it, such as Target, uh, some other bookstores. The, the biggest thing is getting it out and getting it distributed to other people. So Amazon is probably my biggest distributor of the book right now. And lastly, how's your experience working with Authors Press? Uh, positive. Uh, Authors Press has helped me uh, more with the advertising and more getting my book out and uh, advice on things. I have a good facilitator that helps me. Uh, Nicole Richardson helped me with uh, uh, understanding the, the film and songs that could go with it. Uh, so they've given me some a perspective that I didn't have before. Well, thank you so much for sharing your experience. It was a delight to interview you today. Thank you. Hi, Daniel. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Originally, I'm from Fort Wayne, Indiana. I uh, graduated from Xavier University with an MBA and was a consultant in business. And uh, I also served in the military. I was a, a platoon leader for the 3rd Battalion, 12th Infantry, the 4th Infantry Division. And uh, I enjoy writing books. And can you give us a brief synopsis of your book? Yes. This book is action-packed, it's exciting, and it's suspenseful. It's a book about a platoon that, that was under fire by an NBA waiting on a helicopter pickup. The first one was able to pick up the first squad. The second one was able to pick up some of the second squad. And the third squad could was aborted the mission because they couldn't land because of the heavy fire. Uh, from that, the NBA surrounded them and captured them, and they were they were in eight different prison camps and 12 different commandants in 10 years. So a mission was developed 10 years later to find and rescue these prisoners. So the rescue team went over to Vietnam and they began their search. They searched through near Pleiku to the village of Dak Tho and the Cambodia and in the Laos to find these soldiers. They found two compounds that were uh, empty, but the third one was not. They developed an escape plan through help of a special forces unit and they escaped into Cambodia where they, uh, in the Dan Grand Mountain range, and received more help there from a plantation owner to finish the rest of the journey. And they arrived in Thailand for their safety to ride home. And what, what inspired the idea for a journey from darkness to light? I had several experiences with prisoners of war searches in my military career. I did a lot of research on the uh, different uh, programs and different things that happened. And uh, from that, I was able to write the book. The, the book is an outgrowth of fiction plus reality. So it's a combination of various sequences of events that did occur. And would you consider writing therapeutic or is it like a chore? No, I think it's more enjoyable and I guess you call it therapeutic. 
I okay. enjoy doing it. And if you were to describe your book in only three words, what words would they be? Well, I would say action-packed, would be suspenseful, it would be exciting to read, and it flows. You know, there's a plot, there's a, there's a climax, there's uh, a feel-good story at the end, and that's what makes the book a good book. So what is your favorite part of the story? I think the capture of the prisoners of war and their escape, that is my favorite part of the story. Because that's the climax of the story. Soldiers became back in, in custody of, of friendly forces, not the unfriendly ones. And how do you want this book to impact your readers? What message do you want them to take from it? I want to I want to show that the uh, the dedication and bravery that it takes and planning it takes to find search and abstract the soldiers from the from a prison camp and the harrowing message that it sends when they leave that area to to safety. I'm curious, do you think you would get along with your main character? Yes, I would. He's dynamic. Todd Nichols is great. Ted Nichols. Now, as a reader, what do you think makes a story unforgettable? I think this, the uh, getting the attention of the reader the very first couple chapters, I think that sets the tone for a book. And then setting up the climate. What are they trying to achieve? Why, why are you there? What's the purpose? And then when you see it, see that purpose achieved, that becomes success at the end, and it becomes a feel-good story. To me, it starts out with suspense and ends with feeling good at the end, and that's what makes the story. I agree with you 100% because that's like watching a movie, right? If the yes, first few seconds aren't good, you already know how it's going to go. Right. It's about 45 characters in the book. Well, then they're in for a journey. Um, yes. What was your biggest struggle where when you were writing this book? I, I think uh, formulating all the things that I want that occurred, the events around getting the objective done and then finishing the book. Because there's there was many events that occurred, that struggles that occurred to achieve what they wanted to do, and struggles when they left, that were obstacles that they had to overcome. And what, what, how did you feel when you were writing the book? What kind of emotions did it invoke? Well, I had to, <laughs> it always involves you getting involved as a writer in that setting. So I, there, there was an emotional uh, issue for me in that setting. Now, do you have any advice that you can give someone who's just starting to write? Yes. Uh, be sure to prepare a good outline. Know where you're going. It's like a road map. You need, you need a road map to write a book. And then, watch, and then fill in all of the details as much as you can and do your research. I think that's pretty good advice. Where can they purchase your book? And if you have a website, can you please mention it? Certainly. Purchase the book from Amazon.com, from Barnes & Noble, uh, from Reader's Magnet right now, and, and uh, Author's Press. And their, and their creative bookstore, I guess it's called Creative Bookstore. Also, my website is www.danieldewallgrayfeathers.com. It includes both my books that I have out on the market. And do you have any final book related thoughts or remarks you'd like to mention before we end the interview? I would encourage uh, many readers to read it. It's a, it's a very moving story, it's a very fast read, and it's an enjoyable book to read. And, and when you end, you feel great. The book is ended, <laughs> not because they didn't like it, but because they have a feel-good story to end. So yeah, I would I'd recommend it. And lastly, how's your experience working with Authors Press? It's been a very good experience. I mean, uh, I work with G. Smith right now, and um, we're working on a number of different things. Well, thank you so much for your time, Daniel. This was a great interview. Good. Awesome.
Freeze Pass.